So uh, yeah, I'll try and explain any visuals. So if you're listening to audio only, but of course you can catch this stuff on the YouTube channel. And um, uh, for our, um, uh, our our producer, uh, if he could just make the slide screen larger, that would be great uh, because I'm, I'm gonna have some small, uh, small numbers here I need you to really see. So, you know, it's all about the measuring stick, right? And there are many ways to measure things. And right now the media, is measuring things in just one way. When they talk about real estate prices, they're only comparing them to one thing. First off, they're only talking about the price of the property, not the monthly payment on the property. And that's a huge mistake. So we'll get into that one. But they're also comparing the price of real estate only to dollars. Now, guess what, folks? Nobody told you that as you've been saving money to invest in whatever you want to invest in over the last five, 10 or 20 years, nobody forced you to keep your money in dollars, although most of you did, okay? So mostly that's the way people measure things. But I'm here to talk about some alternative ways to measure things and alternative ways to compare the price of real estate, and then in part two, the monthly payment on real estate, which is really more important than the price because very few people buy on a price, most people buy on a payment. So we'll get into that too. Okay, so a tale of three markets. As I was talking about before, there are three types of real estate markets in the country or in the entire world. There are linear markets. These markets are stable and profitable. They are my favorite types of real estate markets. Jay, I'm not sure about you, but I kind of imagine knowing what I know about you and your content and your students, that you like these good solid linear markets too. I know you live in a linear market. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and then there are cyclical markets. These are like a roller coaster. They go up, they have glorious highs, they have really ugly lows. And uh, if you're looking at a graph or a chart, that chart looks like a roller coaster, ups and downs. Now, the funny thing is, most of the markets in the country and in the world that get all the attention are the cyclical markets. They are, there aren't that many of them, but they get all the news media attention. Why is that? Because they're newsworthy. They're not boring. Linear markets are boring. They just chug along and kind of go up slowly. Okay, they have little ups and downs, but they're not very pronounced. Whereas cyclical markets, oh, wow, there's news. Prices are going up like crazy. Prices are crashing. You know, that's newsworthy, right? There's an old saying in the news media, if it bleeds, it leads. The media loves sensationalism. So they tend to ignore all of these great linear markets. And then the third one is the hybrid market. As the name would imply, it's in between the two. So just understand that those are the three types of markets. Um, I always ask this question on my podcast, The Creating Wealth Show, and on my YouTube channel. And I always say, compared to what? And this is a really important question. In fact, I say it so much, my listeners have dubbed it the Jason Hartman question, even though I did not invent the question. <laughs> but they kind of call it the Jason Hartman question. So compared to what? That is the million dollar question we need to be asking ourselves, compared to what? There's an old saying in economics, the cure for high prices is high prices. What does that mean? Well, one interpretation of this famous saying is that when prices are high, demand will fall off and prices will come down, okay? That's the simple, most basic rule of economics is supply and demand. There's another saying, the corollary, the corollary to it is the cure for low prices is low prices. If the prices are too low, the market's going to discover that and they're going to start buying up all the widgets, all the houses, all the whatever, and the, the sellers of these items are going to raise the prices. And this is constantly going on as the market regulates itself through supply and demand. Now, as I talked about before, the most common thing I think on people's minds right now is, are we in a bubble? And if so, if we're in a bubble, when will the bubble pop? That is the question.